Hello, Peter Hewitt, La Testino. Today I want to welcome you to part three of our Lost Ocean Jellyfish Colour Along. We will again be using Joanna Basford's Lost Ocean book. Now this is the UK version, so that's just my dust jacket and it, um, the inside is the nice blue cover which the uh, people with the UK version will be familiar with. Uh, the US version is exactly the same except this is actually printed on the cover and there is no dust jacket. Okay now start off with I would like to say if you've completed part one and part two of this series and you're happy with the result then call it done stamp it done and be happy with it I was looking at this and thinking you know what I'd be happy just to leave it the way it is but I did say I would do a background with you so I'm going to go ahead with a background now today the background that I'm going to do will involve mostly pastels and in the method that I have demonstrated before using this picture here where we powder some pastels using a knife and then rub it in there are other methods that you can use. You can colour it in by pencil. I'll give you a couple of ideas after I've done this for other ways that you could complete this. But for now, I will show you the pastel method that I thought of. Now, a couple of things. I'll just move this out of the way. And I'll give you a chat about what I'm planning to do. Now, I would like to do more than just lay a flat layer of pastels. I'm thinking that I might put some bubbles in there as well. Now the thing about bubbles under the ocean, people think of bubbles about bubbles up here on land when they're soap bubbles, you know, where the surface tension creates a perfect sphere. And that kind of bubble you would see like this, perfectly round. That's not the way bubbles appear underwater. I've done a bit of deep sea diving in my time and I can tell you the way that bubbles look underwater looks more like this. It's sort of a convoluted mass of air sort of getting down here with smaller bubbles dropping below and then you've got little streamer bubbles. And that's basically what water and what bubbles look like underwater. But I think that might be a little bit too hard to reproduce on this picture. It's probably a bit too fussy. You've got a lot of detail with all the tendrils of the jellyfish. So we're going to do, see it's a, it's a bit of an imaginary jellyfish. It's not a realistic jellyfish. We're going to do imaginary bubbles and we're going to do them perfectly round. So what you will need is something that you can draw perfectly round circles with. Now I've got this old school math and mat which is pretty much standard issue for maths classes for children in um, high school in Australia. So you might have one of those lying around. If you haven't got anything like that, something that is small and round with a diameter of a perhaps two centimetres about half an inch to two thirds of an inch to even a full inch across. Something like the bottom of a pill container or a coin even or anything that you can just hold down and draw around to get a perfect circle. It is a bit fiddly and I do recommend that you have some practice first if you haven't you know, done this before. Practice on another piece of paper before you feel confident enough to move it into your book. So what you need is the tool, the Mathemat or whatever tool you're going to use to draw your circles. You'll also need a white pencil. I've got my white Faber-Castell polychromous pencil but I think just about any white pencil will do. What we're looking for with the pencil is to create a resist so that when you rub the pastel over the top it won't take into where you've put the pencil so you're left with a nice whitish outlines um, or a whitish area where the uh, pencil, pastel has been rubbed over the top. Now you'll also need pastels. Now I've got two sorts here. I have my Windsor and Newton are soft pastels. Now, a word of warning, I'm talking about soft pastels here as opposed to oil pastels. Oil pastels have a kind of a, a bit of an oily, slightly damp texture to them where soft pastels will powder nicely into a powder. So you want soft pastels instead. I've got that set. I've also got my Mungio pastels as well. And these are lovely. I bought, I picked these up fairly cheaply and uh, they come with a humongous range of colours which I like so there's lots and lots to choose from. You will also need a pen knife or something sharp that you can use to scratch the pastel dust off with and also you'll need, now I've got some here, these 
makeup pads. It doesn't matter what brand you're using. Basically, makeup pads come, they're fairly cheap. They come in these little rolls and they're little pads like this. They're very good for folding over and rubbing with. Now, if you haven't got those, cotton buds will do or soft tissue or anything along those lines. Again, practice before you put them in your book. You hate to do it for the first time in your book or find out you haven't quite got the technique or what you're using doesn't give you the results that you like. So please do that first. Anyway, I'll show you what I'm going to do on this piece of paper first so that you can appreciate what I'm going to transfer into the book. So for that, we'll just get a little bit closer to the action. I've chosen this circle here to start off with. Now that's about an inch across or just over two centimetres. Uh, you'll be working with the white and here is the tricky bit because you're working with white It's going to be difficult to see where you've been particularly on that bright white paper You you will be able to see it slightly depending on how good your eyesight is and um, how good your lighting is so I'll just show you first using this blue pencil what we're going to do, but don't use the blue pencil We'll use the white pencil. So what we're going to do is just draw the outline and make sure you get a nice good layer on of pencil to stop the um, pastel from sticking over the top of it. Now while you can still see where you've got your circle and holding you know if you've got your um, math mat this is going to be a bit more tricky if you're using something to draw around as opposed to drawing inside of. But while you've got that math mat down just pick out two areas like that. One on either side, little, these little thin banana shapes on either side, just like that. Now we're going to be doing this, I'm showing you this with the blue pencil because I'm going to be doing it with the white pencil which means it's going to be very difficult if not impossible for you to see. But that's what I'm aiming for. So I'll do another one, round around a nice thick layer and then Again, two little banana shapes on either side, just facing each other. Now, you can make them about uh, roughly a quarter of the diameter of the circle. So you've got a blank spot there and a blank spot there and these bananas on either side. Okay, now we'll try this with a white pencil. As you can see, you can't see what I'm doing at all. This is all guesswork. Around, around like that, and then pick out your banana shape. Now, if you're using a coin or a pill container, I suggest that you make a stencil out of it. You uh, draw um, the circle onto a piece of card and then very carefully cut the card around if you can. Was having some kind of circle pre-cut will be best. Another thing is if you have stencils for craft, go through them and see if you can find a circle one that would give you this effect too. Okay, now I've done that. All right, a bit of dust there. I'll take my pastel and I'll show you the effect that I'm looking for with it. So you take your pastel and your knife, being very careful of course with a sharp blade, and now just flick off your pastel dust. Okay, Put that back. Take your little swab. You see, I've used this one already, but just take it, fold in half, fold in half again, and then using the point there, just pinch it like this and rub it in. And voila. You can see the effect now. You've got the white that has is resisting the pastel dust and leaving you with a nice little bubble there. And this is what we're going to do in the jellyfish picture. We're going to make lots of little bubbles around the jellyfish and then rub in the pastel to give us a nice uh, bubbly background without it being too in your face. It's just going to create a texture in the background without it overpowering the jellyfish himself. Now if you're not comfortable doing this technique you can just go ahead and put the pastel down in the 
way that I've shown you before where you just fill the whole page with pastel and you can go and refer to my previous tutorial I'll leave a link down below uh, on how to do that now for those of you who do not have pastels or want to try and stick with pencil I'll just bring the, the book back here so I can show you what I mean I'm not going to do this with my own book but I'll just give you the idea just making sure I haven't got pastel on my hands first before I touch anything. So I hate to have pastel finger marks everywhere. Now if you're not comfortable using the pastels and you just want to do it in pencil, you can go ahead and just colour the whole thing very carefully in pencil. It's, um, you can look at my other tutorials to see how I do backgrounds and it's just a matter of putting down light layers, two, three, four layers of, of pencil. Uh, to get a nice uh, evenly uh, distributed layer. You'll never make it exactly perfect. You won't actually, you will never get this kind of smoothness with pencils. There'll always be a bit of the, the uh, pencil texture to it. But if you're happy with it, that's great. And it will look fine. And I use it myself in my other um, pieces that I've colored in. Now, if you want to break this up, so it's not just a solid piece of uh, pencil coloring in one color, um, you can do a gradient where you start at the top with a lighter colour and bring it down to a darker colour below. You can do beams of light. Now the way you would do that would be to take a ruler or a mathemat and rule in with a light coloured pencil with a maybe a cream or the lightest colour that you're going to use on, the, uh, on your um, colouring in and draw in your beams first. I find make sure they're all going in the same direction and I think it's a good idea to vary the thickness so you've got some thick ones and some thin ones and then again colour up from the top down using a similar technique that you saw in my tutorial for the um, fish pond and that's the sort of beam of light thing that I, I, I'm alluding to there. Now as you get um, deeper down with your beam of light, make it go a little bit darker so that it starts to blend in with the actual water itself to suggest that the beam of light is slowly disappearing as um, it descends down into the water. Now another way that you could colour this in if you want to break it up, you don't want to do a great big solid piece with all the gradients or, or otherwise, is to do a pattern on it. And the pattern that I suggest, I'm not going to draw it in mine, but I'll use this piece of paper to show you. I use another corner of this piece that I'm worth demonstrating on. And let's say I'll just loosely draw our jellyfish here. Let's uh, make our page. Always good to um, do a, a little test do it beforehand if you're trying something new or try, try it on another piece of paper to make sure that you've got the hang of it and you know what you're doing when you put it down on your work. Okay now let's say we've got our jellyfish here with all of these tendrils flying around and then you've got the border pattern along here. I'll just do a line to represent that. What I suggest that you can do, I'll just get another colour so that um, I can demonstrate it to you, okay, is to do wavy lines across. Being careful not to go over your jellyfish. Now this, all these pencil techniques will take time. So make sure when you do them, your wavy lines actually cross each other several times across. See, now you've broken up the background and you've still got a nice watery feel to the picture. What you want to do now that you've drawn them in, and do draw them in very, very lightly so that if you're not happy with them, you can rub them out. What you can do is take the colours that you're going to use and just, now that it's all nicely broken up, just colour in each section, being careful to go around your tendrils of your jellyfish and all that. As I said, it is a bit fiddly. And just colour in each section one of several different colours. It's one of three different colours that you could choose. Now, just like that. So that you're still colouring in the background, but you've broken it up. So it's it's a little easier into you know into smaller bites so it's a little easier to manage. So that's some ideas that you can use for pencil. 
and just scatter, as I said, your different colours. Make sure you're not two colours touching each other and try to break it up as much as you can or as much as you feel you like. As I said, do a little test beforehand on another piece of paper so you've got the right sort of density or lines that you want. You may want more lines than this, you may want less. The idea just is that you want to break the background up to make it easier to colour. And this will be time consuming, there's lots of little fiddly bits to go around, but I think you'd be happy with the results. Now the colours, if you're going to use this method, the colours that I would suggest for the background are your teals and your blues. So if I pull this back, I'll show you what I mean. Now, the colours that I suggest, and again, have your piece of paper handy so that you can actually play with them next to it and choose the colours that you think fits your picture the best. So here's my piece of paper. My colours, as I said, with the um, Faber-Castell Polychromus that I personally would use for this would be looking at your teal. So this cobalt green, which as you know it looks very similar to what we used in there. Yeah. So your cobalt green, you can try if you wanted green in it. You could try this light thylo green. I like the um, light cobalt turquoise. These are all the greenish blues, if you notice. I won't go into the bluey blues. I like the greenish blues for this. So is that going to be a bit too dark? No, that would probably work as well. Try that. I think that's actually going to be a bit too dark. I will use that. No, I think these three, a combination of just these three, using oops, this kind of pattern would look great as a background for this picture. So not that one, these two. Okay, now it gives you a few ideas of what you can do with a pencil background. So we're going to go ahead now with the pastel background using the bubble making method with the white pencil. Now you don't need your pencil to be particularly sharp to start off with, but um, it does help if it's got a little bit of a point. Not too pointy though. And we'll take our Mathemat. Because we're using pastel, I like to have some paper there to protect this page. You can use a piece of paper if you can hold it in place or wrap some um, glad wrap around it, which is a method you've seen me do in the past. I'm going to see if I can do it with a piece of paper. We'll start with some bubbles. We'll choose, I'll just pop this in the centre so you can see what I'm doing. Right, now we're not going to put bubbles on the outside of the pattern, that sort of border pattern, we'll just do them inside. Now I'll pick a nice size and I think I like to go for the smaller ones. There's one here which is approximately 0.6 of an inch across I would say, 0 0.6, 0 0.7 of an inch across, so I'm going to use that one. And I might use a bigger one, this one here, which will be about, about 0.8 of an inch across, 0.8, 0.9 of an inch across. And I might do some small ones too. So I'm going to scatter them three different sizes. And hopefully I'll be able to see where I'm doing it. So start off with, oops, make myself some room here. These are going to be very randomly scattered around. So start off with that. Make sure when you do the little banana shapes that they're orientated the same way. I'm doing mine sort of southwest and northeast. just looking at I can just faintly see them so it'll be enough to enough that I don't go over the top of them though mind you it could be a nice effect just to go over the top of another couple of them should we get that pencil nice and dark my no, well, it's not really dark because it's white it's just nice and thickly laid
cancel that size. Let's do some little ones. It's going to be a bit of a surprise when I put the pastel on to remember where we, all the little bubbles were. If you want to see where um, they all went, you can um, wait until the uh, video is finished and have a look at the final result. And I'll post it up on my blog site as well at Lartestino so you can see exactly where I put all of these bubbles if you want to copy that. But I think you should just go for it and just stick them wherever you feel. Okay, a bit hard to see where I've been, but if I put my Actually, just discovered if you put your head to one side and you look at the reflection of your pencil marks, you'll be able to see exactly where you've done it. Think of that. So yeah, so pop your head down here and let the light bounce off it and it'll tell you where they already are. Okay, alright, that's enough there. I'll do a little few little bubbles in between the Here's um, all this jelly. Do jellyfish have boys and girls? I don't know. It's fronds. It's tentacles. You can also buy from um, art stores stencils which have a variety of different circle sizes on them, which is pretty handy when you're doing stuff like this. Particularly if you feel you, you're going to, to do this again. I, I don't know if I invest in one of those if it's only once off. I know my local art shop has them, but they can be a little bit expensive. But um, kids' school supplies have um, this sort of thing as well. Just using the smallest diameter of circles here to add some circles around the fronds. And I'm holding my head on the side here so I can see where I've been. Pick out places that I need to go. going to be doing this for a little while here. I might speed up the video. Right. So I can get to the fun bit with the pastels.
Okay, now, I know you cannot actually see anything on my piece of paper as how I've distributed, distributed all the bubbles, but on your piece of paper, as I said, I'm tilting my head to the side, I'm looking sort of at an angle at the paper and I can see there where all my bubbles are and I've been using this method to be able to check out where the rest of the bubbles are and distributed them accordingly. So what I mean is you look at it, I don't think the camera will pick this up, but I've been looking at it sort of like on this angle here so I can see where all the bubbles are. Okay, a bit difficult this white on white method, but uh, I like the results and um, I hope you will too. The next um, part that we've got to do is to select a pastel and start putting pastel dust on our paper and then rubbing it in. Now, once again, the colours that I recommend will be around this sort of tealy colour that I've used in the uh, top of the jellyfish. So, with my Mungio pastels, and it depends on what sort of pastels you've got, just select an appropriate colour for yourself. But with my Mungio pastels, I'm going to go with something that looks like this. And I'll demonstrate the colour on a piece of paper first so that you can see what I'm doing. Let's put our jelly to one side. I'll pick them up in a sec to do. Bring back our little test sheet again so I can show you what colours I'm going to use. The colours I'm looking at will be this one, which is a kind of a teal green colour. Now I'll just locate what I've done with my knife and there it is. So the colour I'm looking at using will be this one. Just flip a little bit off. Grab my little sponge to rub in. I'll find a bit that I haven't used yet. And it's that kind of colour that I'm looking at. You said it's a sort of a bluey green colour. And I rub it in. Now if you haven't got that colour, don't worry about it. Just choose a nice blue or a nice sea green colour to do. For instance, I think this one is more of a bluey colour. This would look all right, I think. Again, test it out first. To make sure you're happy with it before you apply it to your paper. See, that's that's more of a nice bright blue. That'd look just as well. As I said, my favourite pick would be a teal colour, but the bright blue will look fine too. There. You could go a little green if you wanted to. This one I've got, I like it, it's like a peppermint green. I'll oh, move that into the centre for you. You've got that kind of a green too that you could use. Or you might like to do a gradient where you start off with the light, this kind of peppermint green, and go down into this teal blue, and then go down into a dark blue. And that would look pretty good too. If I just smush them all in the centre, you can see you can merge them nicely. But anyway, I'm going to go for that teal colour. So, again, making sure you don't get pastel on the bits you don't want pastel. Make sure your hands are clean before you touch stuff. I'll move that out of the way. My little test sheet, and I'll bring the book back. Also, it's a good idea not to let your fingers get wet or damp because you will leave finger marks on your paper. The uh, pastel will stick to the wet finger marks and will leave little imprints. So keep your hands dry when you're using pastels in this manner. I'm going to pick out the one that I selected, which is this colour here. And I'm going to start to scrape colour onto my page and then I'll grab I'll actually grab a fresh face makeup pad to, to start with so I don't accidentally contaminate it with the colours on this one which has been well used. If you've been following the previous tutorials you know that even the white sections should be sealed with white pencil. If not, go back and if you're not sure, go back and make sure they're all nicely sealed down so that you don't end up with uh, the uh, pastel sticking to it. And here we go, this is when I say a little prayer, hoping that I've actually done everything correctly and it's all going to work out. Okay, let's start with that amount and see how we go. Can take our clean pad. I like to kind of put a little bit on my pad as well by rubbing it. That's so that I've got plenty on there and I'm rubbing it in and not rubbing it off. And here we go, and here's the magic. 
I step back here, here's our bubbles. Now they're appearing. By putting a little resist on there, we've got these lovely bubbles coming up. Just rub your pastel all over. bottom side the corners. A bit messy this pastel dust but um, I find it's kind of fun. Oops, that's one of my little dogs barking. One side, let's go do the other side. Now this one's a little bit tricky because I'm going to try and avoid getting any on the facing page. Just using that piece of paper and trying to hold it in place. You could tape the page down or as I said put some um, uh, uh, glad wrap or cling wrap as um, you might call it uh, to protect that page as I've done in previous tutorials. Uh, failing that um, until you seal it with the sealer you will um, be able to uh, for the most part rub it off with an eraser okay here we go I just realized we've got a bit of too much pastel dust on his bulb there okay rub that off there will be a slight tinge sometimes of the pencil with the pastels, but it shouldn't be too bad. In fact, it should work in your favour. The little tinge will um, help to marry all the colours together. knock the rest of this excess pastel dust off and hopefully not contaminate anything on the while I'm doing it. Once you've cleaned up all the pastel dust don't forget that the final step will be to spray your piece of work with some fixative. Now I prefer to use Micador's fixable workable mat I like the workable mat because then I can add things over the top if I want to but it will still hold all the pastel in place. You need to give the can a good shake. Now remember any fixative will do. Uh, you don't want the shiny fixative, you want the matte because you don't want the, the work looking shiny. Or you might. Uh, it doesn't matter as long as you spray a fixative to uh, hold all the past in place and to stop it smudging on, off onto your fingers or onto the other page. And when you're spraying you give it a bit of a shake and then you go whoosh, 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 whoosh. Just a little up and down, sort of like going down the page in a zigzag fashion. And then I like to go the sides as well. Do the same thing but coming in from the side. 
don't do this inside it's pretty yucky fumes that you get out of this I'm not quite sure how damaging it is for you but I don't like taking a risk be outside when you do it and be careful to cover your other page so that you don't get any fixative on the other page as well because that will affect the way that the color lay down occurs on that page once you've done that let it dry completely so give it a good 10-15 minutes at least depending on what the uh, humidity is in your area and when you're happy with that I would still perhaps put a piece of paper in between this page and the next page just to protect the pages at least to begin with to see if there is going to be any rub off and you're done and there is our jellyfish complete with his little sea of bubbles. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and I hope you will join me again next time for my next tutorial that will be coming up in the next few weeks. And uh, until that time, have fun with whatever coloring adventures you're currently on and happy coloring. enjoying any coloring adventures that you are currently on and until next time happy coloring